known as an HMP in a two-video series. The learning objectives of these videos is to understand the purpose, content, and organization of the medical HMP, to prepare the oral presentation of the HMP to its written form, and to know some additional tips on what makes an effective oral presentation. In the first video, I'll discuss the conceptual details of the HMP. In the second video, I'll give an example of an HMP oral presentation displayed side-by-side, real-time annotations pointing out the concepts introduced in the first. This video will cover topics relevant to both oral presentations and their written counterparts. That's because there are obvious similarities between them. Specifically, the overall format is identical. That is, each has a chief complaint, a history of present illness, password history, etc. Each section is presented in the same order and is roughly the same type of content. However, there are, of course, some important differences. For the purpose of the oral presentation is rapid communication and to aid in real-time decision-making. Therefore, it avoids excessive details. The purpose of the written note, however, is to serve as a detailed reference and a legal document, and therefore...
Mr. Oku is a 58 year old man with gout, left knee arthritis, chronic low back pain, and peptic ulcer disease, presenting with an acute abdomen. What's the error here? There are actually two. First, the original version includes parts of the medical history that are completely irrelevant. Second, it includes an interpretation of the exam rather than the patient's presenting symptom. A far better version would read Mr. Oku is a 58 year old man with peptic ulcer disease, presenting with severe epigastric pain for 45 minutes. Finally, what about this chief complaint? Cough and fever. This complaint provides absolutely no context for the symptoms. Is this a previously healthy six month old infant or a 50 year old man with AIDS? Instead, one could report this as Ms. Patel is a 90 year old woman with dementia sent from her nursing home for cough and fever for two hours. Remember, the goal of the chief complaint is to provide the context of the upcoming history without giving away the diagnosis prematurely. In the US, at least, there is a common variation to the chief complaint as I've described it. Some providers separate the chief complaint into ID for identification and CC for chief complaint. For example, the ID might read, Mr. Jones is an 84 year old man with cirrhosis, and a separate chief complaint reads, Vomiting blood for two hours. I personally think it sounds better and flows better to put them both together for the same point. Moving on to the history of present illness, abbreviated HPI. The HPI is like telling a story, one in which chronology is extremely important. It should include key events and only relevant information. It often begins with, quote, This or Ms. So and so was in his or her usual state of health until. Symptoms should be described in addition to just being listed or mentioned. And at the end of the HPI, one should describe the patient's perception of illness or HPI. As a common variation, some clinicians list the HPI in a separate section immediately following the HPI.